What's going on guys? So in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can Dockerize a TypeScript application. You're gonna see that working with Docker for a TypeScript application is a little bit different than a traditional JavaScript or Node.js application just because we have to handle the whole build process. But in the end, it's not too difficult and hopefully after this short video, you guys will be able to get started and get building your own Dockerized TypeScript application. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a simple demo dummy um, express application with one simple route just that we can use for testing purposes. And then we're gonna figure out how we can run that within a Docker environment. So let's go ahead and initialize NPM. So I'll just run an NPM in it dash Y. And once we do that, we can then go ahead and install express. And once express is installed, uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to install the types for express because we are uh, building a TypeScript application. So we'll do npm install at types slash express. And you don't ever want to save this um, uh, as a regular dependency. You want to save it as a development dependency because types are only um, relevant uh, during the development process. So we'll just do dash dash save dev. And we're gonna create a folder and we're gonna call this SRC. So this is gonna be where we keep all of our source code. And then within here, we're gonna create our index.ts file. And uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to import express. So we'll do import express from express. And then let's initialize our express instance. Then we can go ahead and set up our one single route that we're going to have for our application. We'll just send it at the root URL. And then we'll set up the route handler. So we got the rec and the response. And since we are working with TypeScript, we can actually type these out. So uh, if you do request with the capital R, uh, VS Code is going to give you some uh, import options. And there's a request that's the first one here. Um, that's the built in one. I think that's for the fetch API. You don't actually want to use that. You want to use the one that has the word express in it. That's from the express library. Select that and VS Code's going to automatically import that for us. One of the perks of using TypeScript. And you can see it gets imported from the express library. And we're going to do the same thing for the response. So we'll do response. And make sure you select the one that says express. And for this route, we'll just do a return. And then we'll just say res.json. And then put whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, this is just for demonstration purposes. So we'll just do status. Success. And then we'll listen on some specific port. So I'll do app.listen. And then we'll select whatever port you want to listen on. I'll just do port 4000. And then for the callback, I'll just do a console.log listening on port 4000. So that's our Express application. Uh, obviously, dead simple. Uh, you know, nothing else really changes. Uh, all the other steps are going to be the same regardless of how complex your app is or how simple it is. It's all the same principle. So we're just going to stop it right there. The next thing that we want to do is we want to set up TypeScript. So let's install TypeScript. And remember, you know, there's no application that actually runs TypeScript in production. It's just a development tool. So we want to do dash dash save dev. So it's a development dependency. And then we can do npx tsc dash dash init. So that's going to create our ts config uh, file. And within here, let's go ahead and configure this. Um, you know, you could set whatever options that you want. I'm going to just set up the the basic ones that we need. So the first thing is going to be the target. So what do you want to build to? The default is ES2016. You can build to ES6, ES5. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to leave this one as default actually. Uh, the next setting that I want to change is router. So this is going to basically tell uh, TypeScript where is all of our source code essentially. And so our source code is going to be within our source, source folder. So I'll do dot slash SRC. And then finally, we want to search for outder. And so you can see it says specify an output folder for all admitted files. So that's basically saying when we build our code, uh, where do you want to store the finalized JS um, JavaScript files to? So I'm going to uncomment this and I'm going to save it in a folder called dist. Dist or build, you know, those are the two common ones. I'm just going to store it in a folder called dist. So when we actually build our code, it's going to create a new folder within our uh, root project directory called dist and then put all the code in there. All right. And so we've got all of that set up. 
the next thing that we want to do is uh, from a development perspective, uh, we want to set it up so that we can run our application and then our code will automatically restart and build for us automatically, right? Because we don't want to have to build our code manually, then run node uh, and then, you know, index.js. And then anytime we change our code, we have to do that manually and restart it. Instead, we want to use um, a tool kind of like Nodemon, but for TypeScript. And so there's actually a good library for this that's called ts-node-dev. So we're going to do npm install ts-node-dev. And then we want to do save-dev because it's going to be a development dependency. And so once we have that library installed, we can go to our package.json file and we can set up a script. And we'll call this one dev. So when you're working in a development environment, we're going to do ts-node-dev. And we want to run the index.ts file. So you just provide the path to that. So it's going to be src slash index.ts. All right. And now what we can do is we can do an npm run dev. And so our server should start. We should see it say listening on port 4000. And we can test that out. So we can do localhost colon 4000. And we should say, see it's a status success. Perfect. Now, the next thing that we have to do is let's make sure that since we are working in a development environment, if we change any of our source code, it should automatically rebuild. So I'm just going to add in a few exclamation points, hit save, and we should take a look at the logs and we should see it say restarting. So if it did, that's a good thing. We can just double check to see if it worked and we can see the exclamation point. So we've got our development environment uh, set up at this point. All right, so let's go ahead and stop our development server. And now let's set up our scripts for uh, production environments. So we want to be able to build our code so we get all of our JavaScript files. And then we want to set up our start script so that we can run you know, node index.js or whatever our file is called. So let's go to our package.json file. And let's create a script, and we'll call this one build. And so to build our code, we just run TSC. So that's going to build our source code, and we can test this out. So if I do npm run build, all right, you should see a new folder build, um, get created for us called, um, uh, what do we call it, dist. So this is going to create our JavaScript files. So let's test that out. And you can see the dist folder. And you can see the index.js file that was uh, created from this index.ts file. So this is our same express app that we wrote in TypeScript, just converted to plain JavaScript. Perfect. And then from a production perspective, if we go back to our package.json, set start. And for our start script, we want to do two things. Uh, we want to do an npm run build right? Because we want to build our code first. And then after that, we'll do and then we want to run a node and then provide the path to the index.js file. So we'll do node build slash index.js. So let's try this out. And I'm actually going to delete this file just to make sure that it actually works. And I'll do uh, npm start. All right, so we can see it's building our code. And I realize this should actually be dist, not build, because that's the name of the folder. And we'll try that again. All right, and it looks like it's running. It says listening on port 4000. Let's hit refresh and try that. And it looks like it worked. Perfect. Now, before we actually get to the uh, Docker aspect of things, there's one more thing that I want to do. Um, and so sometimes you'll see that when people work with TypeScript, uh, what they actually want to do is uh, delete everything in your dist folder before you actually build your code. Um, because the reason that can potentially be an issue is, let's say I've got some files that I built already, and then I, maybe I made some changes and then I rebuild, right? All of those files are still going to remain there, and then we're just going to be adding the new files to it. So we could end up having stale or old files. So it's best to actually go in and delete it every time you do a start or a build. And the way we do that is there's actually a library in Node.js called RimRAF. It's kind of like the uh, equivalent of doing like a, you know, an RM-RF in a Linux environment, right? It's just used to delete files. So let's actually install that in our package.json file so that we can use that in our build script. So I'm going to stop this. 
I'm going to do npm install. Rimraf. That's the name of the library. And then this is just going to be a development dependency once again. And in our build stage, what we're going to do is we're going to do rim raf dot slash dist and and tsc. So what this command's doing is rim raf dist is basically saying we're going to delete everything in the dist folder. That's what this command does. And then after we delete it, we'll then run tsc to build the file. So it's basically just clearing out the folder and then rebuilding our code. And now let's try doing an npm start just to verify that everything works. So you can see it deleted the folder, recreates it, and then rebuilds it. All right, so hopefully you guys saw that. That's the whole point of the rim ref. You don't have to do that, but I think that's kind of considered best practice. And we'll stop that for now. Okay, so now it's time to actually get started with the Docker side of things. The first thing that we have to do is uh, create our Docker file so that we can actually create our image. So in our root project directory, I'm going to create a new file. And this is going to be called Docker file with a capital D. Now, this is where things are going to get a little interesting. So um, if you've ever created a Docker file for a basic Node.js application, uh, you might have an idea of where to start, but you're going to see that we're going to do something a little bit different for TypeScript. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is the ultimate goal behind Docker and Docker images is we want them to be as small and lightweight as possible. That means I don't want any unnecessary files that aren't absolutely needed in the final image, all right? If they don't do anything, do not put them in there. I want the image to be as tiny as possible. I want the container to be as small and portable as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of Docker multi-stage builds. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but the idea behind multi-stage builds is that we can create a container, perform a certain set of instructions, and then we can create a separate container, copy files from the first container, and then run the second container as the final, uh, final image. And uh, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry, I'm gonna write it out, and you're gonna see that once we write it out, it's gonna make complete sense. But the idea is, I wanna create a container where we build all of our code, where we run npm run build, and it, that's going to convert all of our TypeScript files to JavaScript. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new container and just copy all of the JavaScript files, not the TypeScript files, into the new container. Because we don't need any of the TypeScript files. Nothing can run TypeScript. So there's no need to copy it to the final image. That's a waste of space and a waste of time. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to do that. And it's also going to make it very easy when you're trying to switch between development and production environment because we can have one stage for development and one stage for production. So first things first, we have to define uh, what image we want to use kind of as the base image. So we'll say from, and then there's going to be one, uh, actually, if you don't know, we can just search for uh, Docker Hub. We go to Docker Hub and then search for Node. We can use the default Node.js image. You can see all of the different versions. Pick whichever version that you're using. It doesn't really matter. Or you can just use whatever is latest. Um, I'm going to use node version 16. And then I'm also going to do dash alpine. So that's going to give us a smaller lightweight image. You don't have to use the alpine version, but I think more people use it than not because it's a slimmer version. And like I said, you want these images to be as slim as possible. And then I'm going to say as development. All right, so this is kind of part of the multi-stage build process. So this is just giving this stage a name. So uh, for now, if you don't really understand that, that's okay. I'll explain it in a bit. It's going to make sense when we get further down. Actually, you know what? We'll just delete this for now because we don't actually need it yet. Now, the, the, the normal thing that I like to do is set the working dir. So the working the work dir is just basically uh, what is the main folder in the container that we're going to be working with. So when you set the work dir, anytime you run any commands, anytime you copy files, it's all going to be um, with relation to that specific directory. So if I tell it to run a command, it's going to run it while it's in that directory. So I'm going to do work dir, and the directory is going to be user source app. All right, then the next thing that we want to do is we want to copy the package.json file and the package-lock.json file. So I'm going to do copy package, 
and then I'm going to do a star dot JSON and then dot. So a couple of things that you might have questions uh, with regards to this line. What is this star right here? So like I said, we want to copy the package.json file and then the package-lock.json file. Okay, so when you do this star, this basically is like a wildcard. So if you ever work with reg regular expressions, this is basically what it is. So this is going to allow us to say, copy both the package.json and the package-lock.json file. And the star just means there's going to be any random number of characters uh, between the word package and the .json. So this is going to match both of these files. Now we could manually just write out two different lines saying copy this package.json file and then copy package-lock.json file, but it's a little easier just to do this. And this is what you're gonna see in most of the documentation. The second thing is the directory where we're gonna copy it to within the container. So the dot um, is going to copy it to whatever our working dir is. So we can just do a dot here because we've set this or we can you know, manually type out user source app, but it's just easier just to do a dot because we've set the working dir. And like I said, when you set the working dir, all of the commands, anytime you copy files, it's all gonna be done in this directory. All right, then after you copy your package.json file, you wanna run npm install. So this is going to install all of our dependencies that are listed in package.json, as well as our development dependency, and that's an important thing to note. The next thing that you wanna do is we wanna copy all of the other files, including our source code. So we'll do copy dot dot all right so once again what do these dots mean dot means the current directory is what i want to copy so everything in the docker dash ts um, the root project directory and the dot here means the directory in the docker container and like i said just like with the copy line right here because we set the work there it's going to copy it to that directory or we could just write out that whole directory ourselves but like i said this is easier now the second question you might have is why do we copy the, the package.json file first, then do an npm install, and then do a copy? Well, this is an optimization. So Docker has um, certain um, features that are designed to kind of save us some time. And the way that Docker works is that every single one of these commands is kind of considered like a, a layer in your image. So this is the first layer. It copies the node.js image. Uh, and then we set the work dir, then we copy the file, that's another layer, then we npm run install, uh, and then we'd copy these files. So it creates a different layer. And what's great about Docker is it actually caches the result of each one of these lines. So when we copy from node16-alpine, it, it caches that result. So if any other time we need to um, you know, build an image and the first line is from node16-alpine, right? it can just use that cached result. And then the second line, work dir user slash source slash app, right? That result is also going to be cached. And the reason I, I mentioned this is because think about what happens when you're, um, you know, in a development environment and you're writing your code, right? What is the part of the, uh, what files in here do you think you're going to be changing the most often? Your source code, right? Your source code is going to be changing pretty frequently. And so... Every time, if we don't have this um, enhancement, what's going to happen is every time we change our source code, we're going to have to, well, actually, I think a better way to say is what happens if I just delete this line for now and then just put this up here, All right? If we do it like this, what's going to happen is um, every time we change our source code, it's going to say that this line has changed because we're copying all the files here. Uh, into our container. And since one of these files have changed, Docker says, oh, we can't use the cache result of this because a file has changed. We're going to have to rerun this line. And anytime we rerun one of these lines, we have to run all of the following lines after that. And that's a problem because that means every time we change our source code, we're going to have to run an NPM install. And we all know that is a very long process. Installing all your dependencies can take minutes sometimes. So we don't want to do that. Instead, if we undo this by copying our package.json first and then running an npm install, that's going to cache this result. It's going to cache the result of all of our uh, dependencies uh, with these two lines. And then by putting our copy for the rest of the source code down here, any time we change our source code, that's only going to impact this line. So we'll only have to rerun this line and any other lines after it. We do not have to run these lines. So that means every time we change our source code, we don't need to rerun npm install we can use the cached result. And so that way, 
only, the only time you ever need to run an npm install or Docker will ever need to redo that is if you change any one of your um, development dependencies or your, or, or your production devel- um, dependencies. Only if those changes will you have to rerun an npm install. So that's kind of the main idea behind why we split it up like that. All right, and so after we copy our source code, we then run and run npm run build. Because like I said, in the first container that we create, we want to build all of our source code, and that's going to put it in the dist folder. And that's kind of the first stage. And like I said, this is going to be a multi-stage uh, Docker file. Okay, so now once we've built our source code, I want to copy it to another container, right? Because this this container here has all of the unnecessary TypeScript um, source code that we don't need or want to use. We just want whatever's in the build folder that we that it created, or sorry, not the build for folder, but the dist folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from, and then we have to specify what is the image we're going to use in our final container. And it's going to be the same thing, the node colon 16 dash Alpine, but it can be different. And then we can also give this a name, like I mentioned, but um, I'll leave that blank for now. Actually, let's go ahead and now don't worry about it. And here's um, a couple of optional lines. You don't have to use it, but we can set arguments. And here, let's say I want to set the node env, and I'm going to set this to be production because this is for our production image. And then we can manually set an environment variable if you want. And I can set the node env environment variable to be equal to, and I can just do dollar and then pass in the argument here. So if I put in node underscore env, whatever value I passed here, which is production, it's going to get passed into an environment variable into our container during runtime. Uh, once again, we're going to set the work dir here. It's going to be the same path, user source slash app. And then we're going to do the same exact thing, a copy package.json. Uh, and then same thing, we're going to do an npm install. But we can do, um, uh, I think you can do npm install dash dash only equals production. So what this is going to do is since this um, final container is going to be for production, we don't need all of the development dependencies. When you do dash dash only production, that's going to install only the dev de um, dependencies. We're not going to include um, all of the development dependencies. We don't need these. We don't need TypeScript. We don't need TS node dash dev. We don't need RimRAF. Um, we just need Express in this case. And you can also do, uh, instead of install, we can do CI. So I think this is um, better if you're using like, a, like an automated pipeline. Now, this is where it gets interesting. What we can do is, and what we need to do is, when we run npm run build in the first stage, in the first container, it's going to create all the files uh, within a folder that is in user, source, app, and then dist. User, source, app, dist. So I want to copy the files from the first container into the final production container. So how do we do that? Well, we give each stage a name. So I'm going to give this a name as development, or you can call it as build. doesn't really matter what you call it, but I'm going to call this development. And then I'm going to call this as production. And what we can do here is we can use the copy, right? This is the same copy here that we have here, same command, but I can say dash dash from and we can provide a name of a stage. So the name of the first stage is development. And uh, what's the folder that we want to copy it from? Well, it's going to be under slash user source app. And then remember, when we run npm run build, it's going to create a folder called dist. So we can do dist. And then where do we want to copy it to? Well, we're going to copy it to current directory, and remember the current directory in the container is going to be whatever our work there is, so that's going to be user source app, and we can just copy it to dist. Simple as that. So that's how you copy files 
from one stage to another stage. And so now, I mean, if you take a look at our final image, it's pretty slim. First of all, we've only installed the dependencies for, uh, you know, for production, no development dependencies. And then we'll only have JavaScript files. We won't have any of the unnecessary TypeScript files. And then finally, the command that we want to run when the container actually runs is node, node, dist slash index.js. So we're just basically running this file. Now we can create a uh, we can create a script to do that, but you know a lot of times people say that you know when you're in the final working production uh, image, you don't want to run npm. It's better just to use Node directly. <clears throat> this is just what some people say. I don't know if everyone unanimously agrees on that, but I've kind of stuck with that just because apparently sometimes npm has a hard time sending signals to the Docker container, so it's best to just run Node directly. <clears throat> All right, and so that's it, guys. Um, that's all we have to do for the Docker file. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up Docker Compose so I can show you how you can set it up for development and how you set it up for production because um, you will have to overwrite this command for a, um, a development environment because this is just running npm run build. There's going to be, uh, you know, if we're running in development, we want to make sure that we run um, npm <laughs> run dev, which is going to set up our development environment. So we'll take a look at that in a second or two. But before we move on to that, there's one thing that we're missing. And I noticed that just now. Um, but when we do a copy everything here, when we do copy dot, that's going to copy everything here into the container. And that's bad because we don't want to copy our node modules folder from here into our container. We're going to already be doing an NPM install. There's no need to do that. That's a waste of time. It's a waste of space. We could be copying potentially dependencies that we don't need. So let's set up a docker ignore file. So you do dot docker ignore. And here you just specify all of the files and folders you don't want copied over. So we don't want node underscore modules, and we don't want our dist folder here copied over as well. All right, and so that's going to prevent us from copying on any unnecessary files. And now let's move on to Docker Compose. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually have two separate Docker Compose files, one for prod, one for development. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the first one for development. So I'll just call this uh, docker-compose.dev.yaml. And for this file, um, the first thing that we always have to do is set the version. Pick whatever version you want. I think I just had 3.4 for no reason. doesn't really matter as long as it supports all the commands that we have. Uh, and then we have to define our services. So in this case, we just have one service, which is our Express API. Give it whatever name you want. I'm just going to call it API. Uh, then the first thing that we want to do is specify the build arguments. Uh, you know, how do we build the image for this? So you have to specify the context. So that's basically kind of like, I guess the simplest way to put it is like, what's the path to the Docker the Docker file, basically. <clears throat> so I just do dot. That's basically saying, hey, look, all of the files, this is like the root of our project directory, this current directory. That's where our Docker file is. Uh, and then we want to specify uh, target. This is important, right? Because uh, if you take a look at our Docker file, we don't want to go to the second stage because the second stage is for production environment. We don't want to do all of this unnecessary stuff. We want to just run the first stage. So how do we run just one stage and stop after that? Well, that's what the target argument is. You say target, and then the name of the stage you want to stop at. So we want to stop after the development stage. And so that's going to take a look at our Docker file. Look for the uh, stage called development, and it's going to run all of the stages before it, as well as the development stage. And once the development stage is done, we stop. And so since this is the first stage, there's no other stages to run before it. So it's just this stage that's going to run. The next thing that we want to do is set up volumes. So um, obviously, when you're in a development environment, you want your code to sync up with the container anytime you change it. How do we do that? We're going to have to use a bind mount. It's a special type of volume. And so here we provide a list of volumes. And the way you do a bind mount is you specify the directory on your host computer um, as the first argument. So that's going to say uh, the current directory, which is dot slash. And we want to sync it to what directory in our container? Well, that's going to be user source 
app, right? That's where all of our code's gonna be stored. Um, this will create one problem because if you remember in our Docker ignore file, we're saying when we create the image, don't copy the node modules folder over. However, in our Docker dash compose dash dev, or actually, yeah, here, when we set up this um, bind mount, uh, what's gonna happen is when the bind mount runs, it's gonna copy all of these files into the container. So then it's gonna then copy our node modules folder into our container. And so that defeats the whole purpose. Now we've potentially created issues. So how do we get around it? Well, there's a little loophole or a trick that you can use. Uh, what we can do is we can provide a more specific path to a, uh, uh, to a directory in our container and just make that an anonymous volume. So if I do slash user slash source slash app slash node underscore modules, that's gonna be the path to the node modules folder in our container. And so by adding a more specific volume, in this case, it's an anonymous, you know, which is just a non-named uh, volume, it's going to say, hey, the, the policy here is not as specific as this one because you can see the path is more specific going all the way to the node modules folder. And it's gonna say, basically, leave this alone. Leave this folder alone. Do not sync it with the, do not sync it with our host machine. So that's gonna prevent the node modules folder from getting overwritten from our host computer. Just a little trick. Uh, the next thing that we wanna do is set up the um, ports. So we have to open up a port so that we can uh, translate uh, traffic from our host machine to our container. So I'll do ports, dash. And so here we have to specify two things. All right, so you're gonna put a port number on the left side and a port number on the right side. So the port number on the right side is whatever port the container is listening to. So our container is gonna listen to whatever port we set here, port 4000. So that's what you're gonna do inside on the, on the right side. And the left side is going to be what port sh we should be listening to on our local host machine. So how do we direct traffic from our local host, which is our, my Windows computer here, to the container? So if I want to go to here and just type in localhost colon and then some port number, that's going to be the number that we wanna put here. So if I wanna say, um, I wanna go to localhost 5000 and I want this to get sent to my container, then I would put 5000. And so that's gonna take any requests to our localhost on port 5000 and redirect it to port 4000 in our container. And usually I always like to have these two things match. So I think it's just easier just to send it to localhost 4000 instead of having 5000 and then getting translated to 4000. So it's gonna be 4000 to 4000, which means the, the way to access our container is gonna be localhost 4000. Just keep that in mind. But you can choose any port ultimately. If this port's in use on your machine, then feel free to use any other ports. And then this is the important part. Um, so if you take a look at our Docker file, you can see that at the end of the stage, we run an NPM run build. We don't wanna run an NPM run build. Remember, we're running in development environment. So instead, we wanna make use of our dev script where we run ts node dash dev. So I wanna overwrite the run command here. All right, and instead of using this one, I wanna provide my own in the Docker compose file. And the way we can do that is by specifying a command argument. So I say command, and then what command do I wanna run? Well, I wanna do npm run dev. And that's it guys, so let's give this a shot. Okay, so let's now start our Docker container. And so we can do a Docker compose up. However, because we didn't name our Docker compose file the default name, we called it the .dev.yaml, we're gonna have to rename it, or we're gonna have to provide the name of the file uh, to Docker com uh, compose. So we'll do docker-compose.dev.yaml, and then call up. And so this is going to build our image. And then once it builds our image, it's then going to start it, hopefully, um, using the npm run dev command so that we should see it um, automatically reload anytime we make changes to our source code. All right, so if you take a look at our logs, um, you can see that it says listening on port 4000, so hopefully it worked. Uh, let's try uh, going to localhost 4000. And I realized I misspelled this. It's local host 4000. And we can see status success. Awesome. Now let's quickly do one little check. Let's make some changes to our code. I'm going to delete the exclamation points. 
make whatever change you want, save the files, and let's take a look and see if our code automatically reloads. Automatically, I already see an issue because we should see in the logs it updating and it didn't look like it did. So if I go back to here, hit refresh, I can see the exclamation marks are still there. So why is this not working? Well, it looks like the files, um, well, first of all, let's actually open up a new terminal and let's actually connect to the container. So if we do a Docker, well, for, let's do a Docker PS to get the name of the container. So let's call it Docker TS uh, dash API dash one. So we'll do a Docker exec dash IT for interactive mode. And then we'll go into that. And then we're going to overwrite the command instead use the, the SH. So this is going to allow us to drop into bash or whatever this shell is. And this is going to allow us to explore the file system. And so if we do an LS, we can see all of the files and we want to go into the source folder and we want to just do a cat that's going to print out the context of the index.ts file. And let's take a look at the file. So let's see what happened. Um, did the files actually change? So I deleted the exclamation marks and I do see it did change. So there seems to be an issue with ts-node-dev uh, picking up the changes because our bind mount is properly syncing the files. So what exactly happened? Well, I did a little Googling and it looks like when it comes to Docker containers, there are some uh, issues with ts-node-dev uh, package. We actually have to make, make some changes. We actually have to set up the polling mode. Um, I don't really know what that specifically does, but if you go to our package.json file, uh, within our dev environment, we want to add this dash dash poll command. Uh, so when you set this polling up, I guess um, TS node dev will uh, poll it to check to see if the files change regularly every few seconds or so. So this is what it's going to use to kind of make sure that it can pick up the changes because I guess it doesn't like to work too well um, in a Docker environment by default. So let's change that. And I'm going to go back to my uh, console here. I stopped that and I'm going to do dash dash up. Um, keep in mind, uh, since we did make changes to the package.json file, um, what we need to do is rebuild the image. And so when you do Docker compose, if you just do an up right now, it's not going to rebuild the image, right? It just looks for any image with the correct name. And if you do a Docker image LS, all right, we could see that there's this image called Docker TS underscore API, which was created when we did a Docker compose up. It's just going to look for a image called this. It doesn't matter if it's an old or stale image. It has no way to check it. So you have to manually tell it you want to rebuild it. So we'll do dash dash build. It's going to force it to rebuild the image. All right. And so now it's listening once again. I'm going to hit refresh. So we see that we have it without the exclamation points. And now let's try making a change. So now I'm going to add the exclamation points, hit save, right? And already I see something good. In the logs, I see it restarting. So it looks like it probably worked. So if I hit refresh, we can see that it did successfully work. So awesome. We've got our development environment set up. One other thing to note, you know, uh, usually when I do a Docker compose up, uh, whether I pass the build flag or not, doesn't really matter. Um, I don't want to open up the logs or connect to the logs automatically. So you want to open it up in detached mode with the dash D. And that's why that way it just, well, I actually ran with the dash dash build, but ignore that for a second. We'll let it build real quick. And then it starts our container and it's not going to automatically attach us to the container so that we still have our console. Um, but if you do a Docker PS, you should see it running. And then if I refresh, we can see that it's our API is still working. Awesome. So that's our development environment. In the next section, we're going to take a look at setting up our Docker Compose file for our production environment. All right, so now let's set up our Docker Compose uh, file for production. So I'm just going to do a new file, and I'm just going to call this docker-compose.yaml. I mean, you could technically call it .prod, but I like to just leave the .plain .yaml as the prod version. I'm going to do the same thing, specify the version, pick whatever you want. I'm going to do 3.4. Then we'll do services, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it API just like we did before. And then we're going to have to do the build. In this case, we do context, current directory. That's going to be the path to our Docker file. And then target, the target is now going to be different. We now want to go all the way down to the production stage. 
So we're going to pass in the target as production. And then we have to specify the ports. So once again, we can use whatever ports that we want. I'm going to do the same 4,000, 4,000. And that's all we have to do. You can technically pass in whatever environment variables that you want. Don't really have any for this demo application, but the, the regular rules apply at this point. You know, there's nothing specific to TypeScript that you have to do. Um, really, the main thing is in production, we just want to specify the target, set it to the production stage so that um, if we go to our Docker file, we'll go through the first stage, we'll build our source code, we'll then copy our source code into the dist folder in our production container, and then run node index.js and make sure that when we do an npm install, we only install the production dependencies. And let's just double check to see if this works. So we'll do a Docker compose and we don't have to specify a file name um, just because um, uh, we use the default Docker compose name. Um, we will want to rebuild the image because it's using the image that we built for our development environment. We'll do dash dash build. And I forgot an S here. So Docker compose has no idea what that is. Let's run this. All right, and we can see it's listening on port 4000. I see no mention of ts-node-dev, so that's good. Let's double check to see it worked. I hit refresh, it still worked. Now let's make a change to our code and double check and make sure that nothing changes because in production, we don't want ts-node-dev to run. So I'm gonna delete this, hit save. Let's double check to see if anything changed. I hit refresh, nothing's changed. So the exclamation points are still there. That means that we are successfully in production mode. But I want to just double check one more time just to make sure that um, not only did the files not sync on the machine, but also on top of that, I want to make sure that none of the development dependencies are in there. So I'm going to do a docker exec dash it, the name of the container, and then we'll drop into the shell and we'll do ls. All right. And take a look at this. There's no source folder. Look at that, right? We're in our production container. There's no source folder. And that's because Remember, we want to keep our containers as lightweight as possible. Uh, and so that's why we set up the multi-stage build. So we just copy whatever's in the dist folder. If I go to our dist, we can see our, our JavaScript files. And if we go into our node modules folder and run an ls, you can see all the de um, dependencies. And you'll notice there's no development dependencies in here, right? If you take a look for ts-node-dev, um, you will not see it in here. And if you take a look at um, RimRaf or any of the other development dependencies, none of them will be here. You'll just see Express and whatever Express makes use of. That's all. All right. And I guess one last thing to note is that, um, you know, obviously in a production server, you don't usually perform the build process on the server. So uh, for here, instead of actually using the build option, you would just specify the name of the image and the specific tag that the image that you built in your CI pipeline or whatever and just point it to Docker Hub or wherever you store all of your images. But outside of that, I think this should give you guys a basic foundation on how to Dockerize a TypeScript application.